Hello guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Sarah. Today, I'm gonna to be talking to you guys about something that's been highly requested, and that is pros and cons of RV travel. Now, if you've been following along with our journey, you know that we got a used travel trailer back at the beginning of the year, which we have been renovating, and I've just absolutely fallen in love with it. And somehow along the way, I became the go-to person to ask for RV tips from all of my friends, because before we got this trailer, we used to actually rent RVs, and we did this again on our most recent trip to Utah in June. So I thought, what better way than to actually make a video about my top 10 pros and cons of RV travel. So one thing that I do want to mention going into this video is that most of these tips are based on if you are either renting or you are planning on owning a drivable RV, meaning the cab where you're driving and the living space is all in one. All right, so I'm gonna kind of go back and forth. Like I said, I have 10 pros, 10 cons, so I'm gonna kind of pop back and forth, gonna make this short and sweet for you guys. So the first pro that I wanna talk about is very relevant right now in these COVID times, and that is no airports. Meaning you can rent an RV locally or borrow one from a friend or use RV share, maybe you own one, and you can just get in and go. You don't have to deal with customs, with security, with all the germs that an airport brings right now, and I think that that is a huge plus. Now, my first con, and that's gonna be parking. If you're not used to driving a larger vehicle that's got some overhead height that you can't really see the back of, parking is gonna take some practice. It's not impossible, especially if you are trying to go to touristy locations like national parks, state parks, even Walmarts and big box stores like that. They have plenty of parking, huge parking, so it's not really an issue. This is gonna be more of an issue if you're trying to go into a city and parallel park. So just something to keep in mind. Pro number two, and that is you can bring your pets. So if you have dogs or cats or guinea pigs, I don't know, you can easily take them in an RV. The nice thing about most RVs and travel trailers is they have a generator. So even if you need to leave your pets within your camper, you can turn on the AC and you don't have to worry about them. Con number two, and this kind of ties into the first thing that I said about the parking, it's the overhead height. So just make sure that you're aware of how high your RV or even your travel trailer is. There are certain bridges that you can't go under, parking garages, things like that, that you definitely need to take into consideration when driving an RV. Pro number two, that is that you can park virtually anywhere. I'm not just talking about parking in the sense of like, I'm going somewhere and I need to park, but even for sleeping, there are so many places that you can park. Like you can park at a Walmart, you can park at a Cracker Barrel, um, you can park at a rest stop and just actually spend the night there. So that is a huge pro. Con number three. So, one con of traveling in an RV that we kind of found out the hard way and weren't thinking about is it can be loud. So think about you are sitting in the same area as your kitchen. When you're driving down a bumpy road, all your pots and pans and dishes and stovetop and things like that are gonna rattle. Um, we kind of got creative with our Cruise America RV last time and shoved some blankets under the stovetop and you know, kind of used rubber bands to tie down the drawers because they kept popping open. But that is something to consider and prepare yourself for is it can be loud. Pro number four is that you can go and see places on a budget, I think, because you can really go to multiple stops and stop along the way and you have all of your things with you. You don't need to get a different hotel for each stop that you're going to. So this really can be a cheaper, more effective way to travel. Con number four, and this is kind of a big one, it's dumping your waste. So if you're traveling in an RV or a travel trailer and you plan on actually using the restroom, using the shower, you will have to dump all of this sooner rather than later. Just make sure you have some gloves and some hand soap for when you're done, because this is a dirty job, um, but it's just part of it. And I definitely think that having a bathroom with you, which will take me to pro number five, is a definite plus. Because especially when you're traveling with kids or with multiple people, 
to have to actually everybody get out of the car and go inside of a public restroom is just so time consuming. So when you have your bathroom with you and you can go pee, it just makes your life so much easier. Con number five. This is really a little con, but again, factoring in the overhead height, you can't go through a drive through with an RV. Now, obviously it's easy to hop in and things like that, but right now, again, like I said at the beginning, we're kind of in the middle of this coronavirus stuff, and a lot of us have been depending on drive throughs because fast food places are actually closed. So just keep in mind that with an RV, because of the overhead height, you are not gonna be able to fit through a drive through But a pro is that you have a full kitchen with you. You're literally carrying a fridge, an oven, a microwave in some cases, a freezer, with you at all times. So you can really make all your meals within the camper. I mean, we basically live on peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and spaghetti and things like that while we're traveling. So this past trip that we took to Utah, we only went out to eat, I believe, two times in a whole week long trip. And that was only because these were restaurants that we really wanted to go to. But other than that, you really don't need to go anywhere other than your kitchen. Con number six, this is probably an obvious one, is more gas usage. So whether you're pulling a trailer or you're driving in an RV, you are using more gas than with a regular vehicle. And now to my pro, you really have everything in one spot in an RV. And this is why I'm such an advocate, especially when you're traveling with small kids, just being able to have, like I said, a kitchen, a bathroom, a bed, all in one spot, it's just luxury. You don't have to do the packing and unpacking like you would with hotels and you're not really confined to your car for a full day. You can always hop back into the RV when you're pulled over or get into the travel trailer. And it's really wonderful to have all the kids' toys and snacks and things like that in one spot. Now, one con to think about, and you can fight me on this, this really goes for if you're renting an RV through something like Cruise America, is we always like to get an RV because we do think overall it's a little bit cheaper than renting a car and staying in hotels. But sometimes, depending on what your daily rate for the RV is, it could be just as expensive. So the only reason to do it would be more convenience than actual cost. Now this actually might be my favorite pro, and that is you can go off grid in an RV. What I mean by that is you can do boondocking, also known as primitive camping, in an RV. So in places like Arizona, New Mexico, Utah, there are so many options as far as going on to public land and boondocking, which means you're not hooked up to electricity or water or sewage, you're just essentially parked in the middle of a field somewhere. But the advantage that this brings is that a lot of times you're by yourself and you have that privacy, or you usually will have a beautiful night sky to look at because you're pretty far away from a city. It's free, you can let kids run around, and a lot of times it's way more picturesque than any, you know, RV park that you're gonna get to see. Now I'll take this over to the con. When you are in an RV and you're staying at RV parks, a lot of times these campsites, or I guess RV sites, can be right on top of each other. Um, this is not as bad as this at a state park than it is in like a RV park. But just be prepared that this can sometimes mean a lack of privacy. Back to the pros. This really only goes for you guys if you have kids, but something that really drove us towards RV travel when Sophie was really young was all the naps that kids are still kind of taking. And if you've ever traveled with a toddler, like you need to respect the nap time or you're gonna be miserable. So if you've got a toddler that's napping, if you've got an RV with you, you can just move them into a bed once you've pulled over or let them sleep in your car seat, but you're not confined to the car because you're dragging your house with you, so we can get up and play a game or make some food, and do all these things while our kid is sleeping that you wouldn't necessarily be able to do if you were just in a car. All right, guys, we're getting down to our last two pros and cons. Now, the next con is cooking and cleaning on vacation. Now, I don't find this to be such a big deal, but you know, if you are taking advantage of eating all your meals in the camper, you're gonna have to do some dishes. Again, not a big deal, but something to keep in mind. So my final pro is, and I've kind of mentioned this earlier, you have all your stuff with you. This is amazing. 
if you're traveling with kids, if you're not traveling with kids, you just have all your stuff in one space. So no more, oh my gosh, I forgot this at the hotel or oh my gosh, I forgot this, you know, let's say even at home. You have everything with you because you've packed up your RV full of all the things that you need. This is really a blessing, again, if you're traveling with small kids because you can bring more toys and things than you probably would if you were just taking a road trip. And you have room for them to kind of like spread out and run around a little bit and get some wiggles out um, in just a different, safer environment than, you know, letting them run around at a rest stop, which we do that too. But, you know, if it's bad weather, the fact that you have everything with you inside the camper is such a luxury. Now, I really hate to end it with a con, but we're going back and forth. So the last con is sleep comfort. Now, this really only goes if you are renting. If you're renting from something, let's say like Cruise America, I just use them as an example because they are who we've used in the past. The mattress ain't comfortable. You've got like a plastic covered mattress situation, which is fine, but sleeping on it for a week, you're really glad when you're home in your own bed. But if you are having your own RV, or if you're renting one from someone who's maybe done some upgrades to the beds, that's great. All right, guys, thank you so much for checking out this video. If you have any questions about anything that I talked about, please leave it in the comments below. I hope I was able to talk you guys into renting an RV in the future. I know I did 10 pros and 10 cons, but honestly, the pros definitely outweigh the cons, in my opinion, just because you have so much comfort and flexibility when you're traveling with an RV or a trailer. I highly recommend doing it to anyone. It's really not that difficult to drive. The emptying the toilets part is gross, but it's really not that difficult to figure out. So I will talk to you guys in my next video. Bye.